So, Guild Wars 2 has a problem. And this isn't something that's actually limited just to Guild Wars 2, but it's something that... It's a problem that pretty much every class-based PvP game I've ever played has. And it has to do with how games go about giving defenses to classes. Uh, generally speaking, every defensive mechanic in a game will fall into one of two categories. The first category being what I'm going to refer to as innate defenses, things like armor, uh, extra health, whatever, stuff that is baseline to the character. This is what innate defense is, stuff that does not require input or action. This can also be things like, uh, you know, traits that give extra defensive bonuses or so, or so and similar. Stuff that doesn't require action on the player's part. These are innate defenses. And in the other category you get what I'm going to refer to as active defenses. These are blocks, dodges, uh, stealth, you know, stuff that you can, that requires action on the player's part to defend themselves. And in pretty much any of these games you will find that there are certain classes that the developers have designed to be all about active defense. And you'll have other classes that are all about innate defenses. You know, usually this will come in the form of you'll have the big, burly, armored dude with a big sword will be your typical class that has tons of innate defense, usually in armor and health. And then you'll have, you know, the sneaky, stabby class that zooms around all over the place. And that class will be all about active defense. You know, he won't, he won't have a lot of health or armor. He's just about dodging things and not getting hit usually accompanied, accompanied with a lot of backflipping. And th this, these, this trend in game design and classes, and you'll see this in pretty much any game with a class system, you'll see classes like this. This trend, this goes all, this goes back to before gaming was even a thing. I mean, this goes back to D&D, &D, and honestly, D&D &D probably got it from fantasy. In fact, we know D&D &D got it from fantasy. So th these are the tropes of, you know, the, the slow guy with lots of armor, that uses that armor to defend himself versus, you know, the the Lego loss that backflips everywhere and just avoids all the attacks. You know, th these are ancient, ancient tropes. And unfortunately, games have gotten sucked into using these tropes. And these tropes, even if they're classic, they are horrible for PvP. Particularly on any kind of a game combat system that has any kind of reflexive or twitch-based uh, action to it. Why? Well, because innate defenses and active defenses, they don't scale equally with skill. Innate defenses, they are extremely strong at low levels of play. They're really strong for new players, because new players, they're not good at the game. They don't understand how other classes work. They don't understand what telegraphs look like. They don't know how to anticipate incoming attacks, and so forth. So having a class with lots of innate defenses, that's really good for new players. And that's really effective for those new players. Which means in pretty much any game where that segregates players based on skill, so basically any game with a matchmaker, you'll end up with classes with in lots of innate defenses completely dominating low-level uh, play. Because of this, because, you know, the players at that level, they don't have the skill level required to use active defenses properly. Because active defenses, you know, you need to know how to anticipate attacks to properly use active defenses. Because active defenses, again, they require specific action. And if you don't know that you need to be taking that action, then you can't take that action because you didn't know to do it. That, that's kind of a weird way of saying it, but hopefully you get my drift. But at the flip side, active defenses perform extremely well at high levels of play. For players that really understand the game, that have lots of experience in it, they really love active defenses and really active anything because for them, for players that have the skill to anticipate incoming attacks and to predict what their opponent's going to do and understand how opposing classes work, active defenses give them way better results than innate defenses do because those active defenses that they can personally control allows them to put their skill at the game to its maximum effect. So we have this, this uh, effect here where innate defenses are really good at low levels of play and active defenses are best at high level play. That isn't to say that innate defenses have no value at high level play and that active defenses have no value at low level play. It's just they have their, the effectiveness of various types of defenses are weighted 
depending on levels of play. Unfortunately, when you do what pretty much every game on the market does and have classes defined by whether they're active or innate, where you have some classes that are just the big burly heavy armored dude with a big sword, which are just all innate defenses, well, th that class pretty much always ends up being overpowered at low levels of play and horribly underperforming at high levels of play. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have that sneaky stabby class that backflips everywhere, completely overperforming in high levels of play and horribly underperforming in low levels of play. The differences in effectiveness between innate defenses and active defenses is then compounded by the fact that designers and game designers generally will also have the classes with lots of innate defense, so the big burly armor dude, also be the classes that have big heavy hard hitting attacks with huge cast times. In other words, big he heavy armored burly dude with a big sword. And the, the uh, classes based around active defenses, so the sneaky stabby class that backflips everywhere will generally be using light weapons that attack really fast but do less damage for each attack. Well, that, that's just taking the problem we already have with active versus innate defenses with not scaling with skill makes it even worse because attacks that hit really hard but have a huge cast time and thus are really obvious and generally very telegraphed, those perform horribly at a high level of play because high level players, they're really good at identifying those telegraphs and reacting to them. In fact, you know, if you've got a really a huge great sword with huge cast times, even if it does big damage, you know, high level players they can avoid that in their sleep practically because it's just they're they're given so much time to react to it because it's it's so long of a whatever you get the point and then at the flip side at low levels of play you know the the huge cast time on that big heavy hitting greatsword that doesn't matter because low level players they suck at the game they don't dodge anything so they they get hit with the the big heavy hitting greatsword so that's really effective and then at the opposite end of the spectrum you know, the the stealthy stabby classes with that backflip everywhere, you know, they generally have those those daggers that attack really fast but do little damage. At high level, that's what you want. Because even if they do less damage than the big greatsword, since they, they attack really fast, it's easier to hit a player with. Because, you know, in high level, players are good at dodging. So the best way to hit a opposing player that's good at the game is to have an attack that's really quick so you can hit him before he reacts because if he reacts well you won't hit him so in high level of play really favors those those quick stabby things rather than the the big swords which just compounds it because uh, like we said you know the classes that are all about active defense which active defense is favored in high level are also the classes that generally have the the fast attack weapons that do low damage per attack, which are favored in high level. And then again, the innate defense classes, they perform horribly at high level because innate defense doesn't scale too well, and they overperform at low level where it, it, it scales great. And then they also have the big giant sword, which does really well in low level, but horrible at high level. So it's just compounding the issue. Now, some players have said that this is fine because uh, you want to reward players for learning the game you know if a player gets good enough at the game to use all those active defenses they should be rewarded by how dominant those active defenses are over uh the innate defense classes which are easier to learn and you know what that is completely true you should always reward a player for their skill because basically if a player comes into a game and they put a lot of effort into learning to play the game at a high level and you don't reward them for that, and then some random noob with an easy class is just as effective, well, they're that person's going to get really mad because they feel like they're not being rewarded for the effort they put in. They're going to get really angry, a lot of righteous anger at how unfair you're treating them, given that, you know, this random noob's just as good as them in his little noob innate defense class. And they'll quit the game. Because they're not being rewarded. You should always reward players for investing time and effort to practice and get better at your game. But, at the same time, you have to realize that players have favorites. Players have classes that they love. And players get really mad if the class that they love is not competitive. And it doesn't matter 
how much you try and discourage players from having a so-called main, i.e. a favorite class. You know, even games like Overwatch and Heroes of the Storm and League of Legends that actively try and discourage you, player, players from having a main, players still have mains in those games because it's just human nature. We, we, we all have that class that we just really love the aesthetic or we really love uh, the play style or, you know, that we just think the character looks cool, whatever. Players will always have mains, and players will always get mad when their main isn't competitive. So, if you have a player that comes into the game, he's a new player, and he he really loves playing big bulky armored dude with a big sword. That that's his favorite thing to play. And he gets in, and you know he's a low level player, and in low level, big heavy, burly armored dude with a big sword is really effective for the reasons we've already outlined. So he kills some people, and he wins some matches, and he's like, Hey, killing people and winning is really fun. I want to kill more people and win more. So he practices, and he gets better at the game. And then he ends up, because he's been practicing and getting better at the game, in high-level play. And all of a sudden, big bulky armor dude with a big sword that he loves so much is garbage. He's not too happy, is he? And he's probably going to get really mad... He's going to write all sorts of complaint threads on the forums and Reddit about how horrible the devs are at balancing their game, and then he's going to rage quit the game. Well, that's not good. And then at the opposite end, we have another new player. He gets into the game, but he really loves playing that sneaky, stabby class that backflips everywhere. So he gets in, and he gets on the obligatory sneaky, stabby class that backflips everywhere that every game has, and he gets into a match. But since he's a new player... He doesn't know how to use all those active defenses that the Sneaky Stabby class has. And the Sneaky Stabby class doesn't have any innate defenses, so he dies a lot. And in the process, and during all this time that he's dying, he goes up and he sees a big burly armor dude with a big sword, and he goes up and he pokes him. And then big burly armor dude doesn't die. And then big burly armor dude turns around and hits him over the head with his big sword, and he dies. He's not too happy. Because all he's doing is dying, and then he sees, you know, Big Burly Armor Dude, which is a class that he's not interested in playing, and that class is just, you know, dominating him every time. So he gets really mad, tells all his friends that the game's horrible and completely unbalanced, and rage quits. I've had experience with this uh, firsthand. You know, I main in Guild Wars 2 a Necromancer, which is probably the poster boy for innate defense classes. It's basically a giant uh, health sponge with no other notable defenses other than a handful of debuffs and some CC. That's not to say there's no active defenses on Necromancer. Obviously, you have your two dodge charges, but of all the classes in the game, it has the least by a large margin. And as a Necromancer main, I put a lot of effort into the game clawing my way up into higher levels. I am by no means the best necromancer in the game, and I'm by no means the best player in the game, but I've clawed my way up into platinum as a necro, and having gotten to platinum, I find the game extremely frustrating because I just get constantly run in circles by all these active defense classes, all these classes that I can never hit because my attack rate is too telegraphed, too slow to hit all of these dodge heavy classes that are all over high level play and then of course there's I get kited by everything because again it's a necro so it creates a frustrating experience to me because I'm dealing with this issue where I just get run in circles by everything and this often means that the only way I can actually win a fight is if the opponent messes up not because I can outplay them because I can't so that creates a frustrating experience for me and on the other side um, several months ago, a bunch of my friends from Star Wars The Old Republic, which was the game I played before it came to Guild Wars 2, they actually came over here to Guild Wars 2 to try it out. And, you know, they PvP'd a lot in Star Wars The Old Republic, so they figured they'd try out PvP in Guild Wars 2. So. And one of them, uh, he really loves playing sneaky, stabby classes. He, he played an operative in a Shadow in... Star Wars The Old Republic, so of course he wanted to play a Thief. And I was like, okay, that's a great choice. You know, Thief is a very competitive class. It's definitely a good choice to be a main. And I, I showed him some things, you know, I set him up with a competitive build. I, I told him kind of what, this is what you, you're 
job is as a thief. You know, this is kind of what you need to be doing, and this is how you go about attacking people. So, this guy, who was brand new to the game, he actually had probably much more advantages than a typical brand new player, since I, I kind of coached him a bit before he went into his first matches. But even then, even with that, that bit of coaching, um, since he was a new player and he didn't have any experience in the game, he, he, he didn't understand the tells... And he just died a lot because he just didn't have the muscle memory or the ability to read the fights right. So he just died constantly on this super squishy all active defense thief class. And he got really frustrated and there was nothing I could tell him to convince him that the game was fun. Because he just died all the time and he, he couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So he never came back. And it's just like, th this is what's hurting the game. And this is what is hurting pretty much all class-based PvP games at some level. Because they just... N developers have made no effort to move away from these tropes. And it's... And as games are becoming progressively more reflexive and Twitch-based compared to where they were, you know, a decade ago. This problem is getting worse and worse. And it's something that wouldn't be that hard to fix. Like, all developers really need to do is when they design classes they need to um, make sure the classes just have a fairly equal mix of innate and active defenses you don't have to like throw all your thematics out the window you don't have to throw the idea of a sneaky stabby class out the window or whatnot you just got to take a slightly different approach to doing it than just having the sneaky stabby class thing having a million dodges and the big bulky armor dude having no dodges but lots of armor. You just, you have to a little more involved in design. Like, and we have classes like this. Warrior's a good example of this in Guild Wars 2. It's a class that is almost perfectly balanced between innate defenses in terms of armor and, you know, health re passive health regen and active defenses, blocks, uh, evades, you know, full counter and so forth. It's a very balanced class. And even in terms of not just its defenses, but its offenses, you know, it has some weapons like Greatsword and Hammer that are these big, heavy-hitting attacks that are very telegraphed and easy to avoid, but it also has weapons like Dagger or Axe that have a very fast attack rate with very low cast times. So it's balanced, both offensively and defensively, between innate and active and quick and slow. But then... In the same game, we have classes like Thief, which are the whole concept of all active, no innate, and all rapid attacks, no slow attacks, taken to its most logical extreme. And then we've got Necro, which is, you know, the innate defenses taken to the most extreme you could possibly take it. And it's like, the game isn't better off for this. This is making the game worse. You know, Necros need active defenses, and you could probably cut down on some of their uh, insane health sponge if you gave them some. And then thieves probably don't need the crazy amount of ac active defenses they currently have, and you could probably give them a more innate defenses. You know, maybe move Thief up to T2 health, but then cut down on the sheer amount of dodges and blinds it has or something. And, you know, maybe Necro could get cut down to T2 health, but then it, it has, you know maybe some evades on a couple skills or something. You know, th these are fixable things. It's just developers don't realize that this is a problem, even though it, it's destroying their game in, like, pretty much every game. And it, it really frustrates me to see this. And it's something that hopefully going forward, developers will wake up, realize there's a problem, and do something about it.